Man, I really want to build Pepe. Like, I want to play Pepe format. I actually never got I, I forgot, how many times did you get to play Pepe before the emergency bandit? <laughs> I played it for two weeks, man. Uh, no, you got you got to play for an event though, at least, right? No, yeah, you got to play after the ban list, right? No, yeah, so I know, so I got it on release, and then they e-banned it in two weeks. It was literally like, the, so I bought Pepe on release, and then the first regional after Pepe for us was, um, was Oshawa, and it was like three or four weeks after Pepe came out, right? So obviously there was no real events. I mean, I played it at locals and I, I won locals, I guess, with it, if that counts. So the first regional that we had in, in Oshawa, so the, the, the earliest regional since Bosch drop, I was like, okay, I'm prepared. We're going to go. We're going to go. And I remember Amir sends me a message and he's like, you're not going to like this. Because I was prepped for the event. Like I was prepped for the regionals. So like literally a week before the regionals, they draw the e -ban, they drop the emergency ban list. And uh, yeah, I ended up playing... Um, I ended up playing a really fun build. This was back in the day when I used to know how to actually think deck build and be innovative. I played Isn't uh that the one where you play like Armageddon Knight. Yeah, like, so you play like but, Chaos Pepe. Oh, I remember this. You were on Sam's channel actually. Yeah, yeah, that and that this did really well for me actually. I think I came. Uh, I didn't top that day though. Oh, no, I did top. I did top. Yeah, I did top that day. I came. I uh, you're a pendulum. You're a pendulum player before Trip was. Dude. I topped that day. I was um. Well, no, I didn't like top eight or anything. I remember that day. I think I came seventeenth that day. Ah, I came seventeenth, but it was like a three hundred man tournament, bro. Way better than coming seventeenth and bragging about it with a fucking thirty man tournament in the EU. No, this. Where'd you play, EU when, wait, what? Uh, where'd you place in the ABC format on your? Uh, ABC. I came fourteenth. Uh, oh, you top sixteen then? Yeah, yeah, I top, I top sixteen. Uh, I don't remember how many people it was. It was a regional though. Usually regional is like two hundred plus. I don't know the exact number though. I can't tell you, but definitely yeah. more than two hundred. You had your moment, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I had. I had back-to-back -back tops at that, because it was Pepe format, then the emergency ban list, and then after Pepe format, then the ABC structure came out. So yeah, I came 17th, and then I came, and then I went 14th. Um, but, you know Bro, what's what funny? If already, what if you already hit your prime? What if you just washed now? No, I'm definitely washed. Uh, <laughs> what was I say? When I hit, um, when I topped with Pepe, right? What's funny is me and Sam did the profile at the beginning of the night. So before I actually had played the, at the event. So what happened was I got to the event early and I saw Sam and Sam was doing deck profiles. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, Sam, do you want to like do a quick deck profile? I'm like, it's a really cool concept that like people aren't really playing like dark pendulums or chaos pendulums. I think I called it. I can't remember. It's chaos pendulums or shit. And he was like, oh, that sounds, that sounds sick. Let's do it. So I did the profile on his channel, but now looking back at it, I had, I wish that I had uh, waited till after the event. I actually don't even know if he did profiles after the event, but I know, um, I had, I wish you sometimes... stick your record with it, huh? Yeah. Cause then I could actually do the deck profile and be like, oh, I came 17th with this. And then like, yeah, it get way more clout. I get way more hype at the time. Chad, do you guys know the profile I'm talking about, by the way? See, let me see if I can find it on YouTube. It's an old ass video though. You peaked, bro. You peaked in the, the Pepe Apka format. This was back when, by the way, Chad, this was back when Sam was at like 10K su subs, maybe like 15K. This was back when Sam was like literally, no this, but he was very small. Actually, it's not a diss. I mean. Oh, you can probably search it by uh, Yu Gi Tube, right? Oh yeah. I, I feel like I feel like that name was in the title. Yeah, I remember because try if you guys don't know, I used to be Yugi Two. Oh, right here, here, yeah, Dark Draco pals. Yeah, look at that, Young Spank. Literally Young Spanko. Back when I was Yugi Two. My channel, uh, Team Sam. Thank you for supporting me and stuff. Um, check out my channel. You Bro, I was literally. This is so cringe. I was like, <laughs> how old were we here? This is six years ago, dude. Bro, we were, no, it was. Wait, why do you look so much younger for six years? I feel like six I don't look years? that much different. No, what were we then? We we're eighteen, yeah, because I'm twenty-four. We we're eighteen. Oh, bro, I feel like I was. I feel younger than you. You should have looked like you just got out of high school. Yeah, I literally looked like I was sixteen here, but no, I was eighteen here. Wow, Clark Kent, bro, this is so funny. I love this. Oh, I want to. I never read the comments. Did people roast me? Oh, actually, this build kind of works. I know it works. I topped this event. Magician with Pepe Two Eleven Pay. Why would run a lure? Shout out to the Thousand Eyes. Yo, facts. Thousand Eyes at the time was broken because Beatrice was, um... That's when BA became a thing. So Beatrice was around and Thousand Eyes was the only way to out Beatrice. Draco Pals still exist. Yes, sir. And they came in 17th. This is my Monarch Cosmo deck list. Love advertising. Bro, look. He has no comments, by the way. This is back in the day. Sam had 21 comments. You go on a Sam video now, it's 5,000 comments. This is, I'm telling you. Um, no, no, no lie. This was when Sam was at like 10k subs. This, this was when Sam was small. A humble beginnings. And and the best part about this is this got 13k views, which I'm pretty sure at the at the time when Sam was doing this, I don't think any of his videos got like 13k views at that time. I think his videos were getting like a few k, like maybe like three four k. I mean he's at 10k subs, right? But 
to get 13 this, like this was a good upload though because like a lot of people were curious of how to play this deck especially after emergency ban list. yeah so a lot of sense. yeah okay chat so this is one of the things that i always regret because i used to be known as yugi tube right and that was my old youtube channel i remember after this video i gained like a thousand maybe two thousand no not two thousand two thousand exaggeration but i definitely gained over a thousand subscribers just from this video i got deck profiles i got do videos anything y'all want look at i'm just fucking hyping up my own channel bro <laughs> I'm just, I'm just hyping up my own channel. every other Yu youtuber who plugs themselves I just, anything y'all want this is when i first started yo i'm being i'm being dead ass when i say i think at this point i was around 3k subscribers and i think after this video literally in like two days i went from 3k to like close to 5k subscribers and then i peaked to like 7k and then i and then i mistakes made were made in my life oh you peaked wearing chonky glasses and a regular old hat bro for real uh, yeah, let's get started. Alright, let's start with the deck robot, bro. Let's do it. Let's, right, let's go with the monster. Bro, even Sam sounds like a child, man. Just into the main deck. Uh, triple sword. Obviously, didn't get hit. Chat, these were a you hundred know, dollars at the time, or like a hundred and twenty dollars a piece at the time. That's why I always, I was, I was like determined to play this deck no matter what because I had this was the first time I actually put like big money down on a deck because I told myself I was topping the event no matter what, and then emergency ban list just destroyed me. But whatever. It's the best card of the deck, you need that card. Exactly. Um, bump Silver Claw to three just because you need high scales and it's uh, it's just too good not to play. Um, his his uh, attack boost and stuff is so, so useful because um, you can't get into big monsters as much. Bro, look how nervous I am. Why do I keep playing with my cards? The Yugi Tuber special. So what you do is, I'll show you guys later, but you go part Naga like this and you boost the hell out of your monsters. Yeah, I and like. You can get over Dark Destroyer with Skull Crow Bad Joker. Like, it's crazy. So this card is just so, so good at three. Oh, yeah. Cosmo was broken at this time, too. This was Cosmo. Uh, Cosmo, VA, Monarch format. Yeah, because you guys are going to see, I'm pretty sure I played Maxi in the side deck. I'm like 99% sure I played Maxi in the side deck at this event. Uh, three second donkey. Uh, I didn't like the card, but it's the, it's the second. It's a second version of Joker, exactly, you know. Exactly. And um, you play Pendulum Rising as well, and these are targets for Pen P Rising. Uh, double Lizard Draw, double Guterto, uh Bump it. I miss this. I I remember when this was in meta, bro. I love this combo. Draw two pot agree. Let's go. Bump get to the two just cause uh just cause you know you need draw power and then originally I was playing three lizard draw but I took it to two and one just cause sometimes you need low scales and so you can search both with uh, feral limbs obviously then obviously for the one ups you play monkey board skull crowbat best cards in the deck um so for the dark end for everyone that doesn't know monkey board and joker were at three at the time and it was the most broken deck bro you could literally have no cards in hand top deck monkey board and have full combo it's so broken that's what, is that what they hit. Yeah, so Monkey Board was at 3 at this time. So, bro, the thing about Pendulum back in the day, and this is why people didn't like Pendulum and why it got so many nerfs, is because what happened with Pendulum back in the day, obviously you didn't need Link Zones to Special Summon, and you didn't have the extra Monster Zone, right? So, literally, you would make your full board, and if your opponent broke your entire board, let's say I had no cards in hand, I would top duck Monkey Board, Monkey Board activate, search another scale, because it searches a scale on activation. So you would just search any other scale that you're missing. So I think it'd be the high scale, because I'm pretty sure Monkey Board was like a one scale or whatever. But you search the one, the, the eight scale, so you have one and eight, and you just pen summon five. So good, man. You were on two Armana. I literally became famous just for this tech in Pepe. Uh, one, Zeph uh, one Zephyros and one Shadow Dragon. Nice. Get rid of back row, get rid of domain, get rid of anything. This card's uh, good. Zephyros, man. It, it, it can recycle your monkey board. Bro, it can recycle monkey board. The craziest plays is when you have monkey board. Um, and you don't even need to pen summon. You go normal, send monkey board back. So you get the search already for monkey board. And then you go monkey board again. Like it's oh, yeah. Monkey board wasn't once per turn. You just Zephyros keep sending your monkey <laughs> Crazy, it's just really good, uh, crazy plays with these. Um, so for the Dracos, you play one Luster, obviously. Uh, three mass Guys, Luster was a fifty dollar card at this time, by the way. Lust these these were like two or three, no, maybe like four. I know the Masters were like fours. These are like two dollars, but the Luster was like fifty bucks. Luster and two Vector, best. I think this is like honestly can't be changed. Uh, one, two, three is honestly the best thing. Um, you brick with these. You don't want to see these guys ever in your hands. Maybe you'll see one of him, which is fine. You want to see him, but that's like searchable. But these you never really want to see in your hand. It's uh, bricky cards, and you never want to see them. Uh, for the one ofs, we play one eccentric. Andrew, do you remember this card? Dude, Draco, Slayer, and like Arching Eccentric. Okay, the only reason those cards give me bad memories is because. Those are the cards that I ended up pulling, and then like the people who were like, oh, at four one, we, one, just we started at really bad locals. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And they, they like, uh, they're like predators, right? They saw like new players pulling like, expensive cards, and like, 
try to rip them off. Specifically Alpha more so than me, but me and Alpha both like pulled some pretty expensive cards and it would have helped us actually progress in the game, but we kind of got handicapped because the people at the locals at the time, this isn't Untouchables by the way, but the people at the locals that we used to go through at the time were just scumbags. Trick, didn't want to bump to two. Oh yeah, but by the way, this card was like $60 at the time too. Like this is a yeah. $500 deck by the way. I remember I, this is the first time I spent my, bro, I'm so mad. I spent so much money on this and it gets hit in a week or two weeks. What happened with Pepe was, I think, when it was released, the next weekend after it was released was a was a YCS in the States. I don't remember exactly which YCS. 31 out of the 32 tops were Pepe. And so literally the week, like literally the week of, or the week after the YCS, they're just like, okay, we can't deal with this. Monkey Boy to one, Joker to one. I can't remember what else got hit. I think one more thing got hit, but yeah, anyways. Um, he's good enough at one. One rabbit, obviously just- Oh yeah, plush fire. That's what went to zero. There you go, plush fire, thank you. Plus for, five to get your plays out, yeah, for your masters. And I mean one maxi, I also side one. Um, the main guys, I main decked one maxi and I sided one. Impeccable Yu-Gi-Oh logic, I say. So here's what I, I'll give you my logic because I actually remember this. So at the time it was Monarch Cosmo BA format, right? Monarch obviously maxi does nothing. Cosmo at most. Cosmo, you would you would draw one only when they activated their farm girl or something because then they could just play around it and just not summon anymore because they didn't need to, Cosmo, right? And Maxi was at two at this time. So, yeah, I just played one in the main, one in the side. So funny. I only main one just because, like, you know what? If I brick hand, if I brick and, like, if I'm going against the mirror or PK and I open this, um, honestly, like, you just hit them with Maxi. Either they go off and they give you eight, ten cards, or they don't do anything and then you can go for game. So it's really good. It's never a dead card because it's always one for one. Like, you yeah. pitch one and whatever. Spells, you go for three pe P rising, uh, Pendulum rising. Oh! Was this the list that Wavering Eyes went to one, two, or zero? It might be the list where Wavering Eyes went to zero, because I remember Wavering Eyes was broken. Yeah, I think this is the same list. Oh, they destroyed Pepe, man. They actually made Pepe so unplayable. The new Wavering Eyes. That's all I can say. Like, the new Wavering Eyes. Yeah, you heard it. You heard, literally heard me. The new Wavering Eyes. The Wavering Eyes went to zero at this list. I can't believe I came 17th with this. <laughs> Looking... What event was this? Was this Oshawa, you said? Uh, Oshawa Regionals. Yeah, 2016 Oshawa Regionals, I'm pretty sure. Jeez. This is all you can do. Um, if you don't open Sork, you just P right. Like, you'll, you can normal. Um, if you have scales, you get his effect. Then you P rising for Sork, and you get Sork effect. It's just combos and combos. Uh, double instant now. Uh, you play one Norden and one Thousand Eyes in the extra deck. Thousand Eyes is just crazy, he's good. Nice. Double MST. Uh, again, this deck lost so much consistency. You don't want to main, like, twisters because, like, you don't want to discard anything. So that's it. Double MST for that. And, like, they look nice because they're secrets and stuff. Yeah. I love these secrets. Uh, one upside because it's a one of uh, one face off. I'm so cringe. I'm actually so cringe. They look nice because they're secrets. They actually did look nice, but that's so cringe. You had to this play MST. You. What do you mean, bro? No, I'm saying, yeah, it is cringe. I'm cringe. This is so cringy to watch. You know what was funny, though? I remember at this time, the only other back row hate card, they had two back row card hate cards in the game. We had MST and T Twister. And obviously, I didn't play Twin Twister because Pendulum kind of sucks with Twin Twister. But also, the only thing you would ever hit with MST is Domain, really. Um, I think BA played Fire Lake at the time, so I guess you could MST Fire Lake, but that's it. Because if, if you open it, you win. If you open this, honestly, if you open Draco face off, you have game. Like, it, they can't do anything to this because you get your luster out in, immediately. And just to round it off, you play one Tretch and one Bottomless. Um, I always used to play one Trap. Uh, I play two now because I know, I mean, you can't target um, Cosmos with this, but with PK and stuff, like, Sure, they get the graveyard effects, but honestly, you pop two before they go into Dante or pop something. Um, it just so, so if, they, if they go Terra Top and uh, yeah, Taki Hamburg, yeah. exactly, then you just go Treacherous and you, they like they, they have nothing. Nice, awesome. That's it for the main. For anyone who doesn't know, the deck, the, the end boards in this was Reflesia. So it used to be Reflesia Infinity. Oh, yo, by the way, speaking of, this is the same list they hit Ptolemyus too. Bro, I lost so much money. Holy fuck. Infinities were like $80 a piece at this time. Ptolemyus was like 20 like I remember. So Ptolemyus wasn't bad. Main deck, 40 card main deck. Uh, uh, to your uh, side deck? Yeah. Side deck real quick? Uh, side deck? Yeah, I'll go into side deck before me. Uh, extra, I guess. Five to so $600 uh, combo deck refuses to buy adventure. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Because now I, this is, bro, after this is event is, event is when I learned to never buy meta ever again. I, yo, wait, this event scarred you. This, like, occurrence, this whole ban list situation and everything, this scarred you, huh? No, this is just scarred. I'm not even joking. This this ban list, this is the reason why Alpha, like, whenever, whenever I tell you, like, oh, I don't want to buy this because, like, it's going to get hit or why I never want to buy the best deck in the format, it's you literally because of this. actually got scarred, dude. No, no, it's literally, it's legit because of this. So, guys, for everyone who doesn't know, 
the reason I never play like the best top meta deck is because I know if I pay five hundred dollars or four hundred dollars for my adventure, like adventure, um, what's it called engine, I know adventure is gonna get hit. Maybe not this ban list, but it's gonna get hit. So I'm like, wow, I spent four hundred dollars. And realistically, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Realistically, unless I'm going to somewhere where I make that money back, I'm it's not worth it for me. So I'd rather just play something else. And because if we're talking locals, right? I know I can top locals with anything. I don't need to play adventure top locals. So why would I spend four hundred dollars to go to locals? You know what I mean? So after this event, because this event I, I played, or before this event technically, but when I when uh, when I bought Pepe, I think I spent like five hundred something dollars. Actually, I think I got a deal for it because I know the guy I bought it from had the like pretty much the entire core. But I think it was like five hundred dollars. Pretty sure. So I spent like five hundred dollars on it. So that's three Pensorg, Infinity, Ptolemaeus, Luster. So all of it I think came out to like four hundred fifty because I bought the extra deck too because at this time I didn't have. I didn't, this is I mean, this is like when I'm kind of new to the game. This is I think we've been playing. When did we start playing Yu Gi Oh? 2015. This is 2016. Oh, 20, yeah, I think it's been like a year or so. Yeah, so at this point we've only been playing for like approximately a year of Yu Gi Oh. Bro, if you guys don't know, if you guys never played in Bosch format, Bosch format was disgusting. Infinity was 80 bucks. Pensorg was like a hundred, uh, maybe even more than a hundred. But I'm just gonna say a hundred. So it was like 80, 100. Strikes were 120. What else was in Bosch? The Twin Twisters were 20s each, and they were super rares. Twin Twister was like 20s each. Bosch also came out with Fiendish, and Fiendish was a $7 rare. It was a $7 rare. Bosch was a Bosch, broken exactly. set. No, Bosch was, was a lot of crazy stuff. Bosch was one Obviously, of the, now it's like yeah. very watered down, but back then, bro, it was. Bosch, back then, I remember people were saying Bosch, and I even said this too. Bosch was the greatest set of all time. At the time, at the time. You get one maxi just to double up. I never like to play one ups. One ups are just really bad. One maxi, double flying C for PK and BA, double Veiler for uh, Monarchs. Double Gamma Seal just in case I saw Quantums and then get over Beatrice, get over Dark Destroyer. Oh yeah, Quantum was randomly around at this time. That's why I played this. And for Dark and for Cosmos as well. But yeah, uh, Quantum was around. So this was good against Cosmo, but it was also good against Quantum. Your boy Gamma Seal been with you since the 16. But one of my favorite cards of all time. Literally Gamma Seal is one of my favorite cards of all time. Stuff like that. One extra MST just because um, Domain and Monarchs and stuff. One Soul Drain. Soul Drain is mostly for just... Uh, like if you guys are asking why I'm playing one Soul Drain, at the time it was at one, it was not at three. Like now it's at three, but at the time it was at one. So you just Soul Drain against the BA matchup is really strong. And BA and PK. Um, it's kind of funny, but like, I don't know, people don't play this, but I like it. As long as you see it, you kind of have game because they can't do anything with it. And then just to finish it off, three Restrict, three Iron Wall. Um, Holy shit. Do you remember Master Restrict? This is the only way to oh. Beat Monarchs at the time, guys. Do you I guys, do you guys probably don't won't believe this, but I, Masquerade Restricts commons, I think, were like tens to fifteens a piece at the time. I remember this is the first card that kind of like opened my eyes to like how crazy the market can be. Because I remember we bought these as like two or three dollars. Yeah, we. I remember we, me and you bought, prior bought these. to the hearing about the structure deck, or no, the actual structure deck released because we heard about it. Yeah, we weren't like entirely sure. I remember we were so bad because like. We were like, yeah, I don't know if, like, we don't really know if this card's going to be great, because what if Monarch's bad, right? So I remember I only bought two Mask Restrict instead of three. Oh, like... I don't remember that. I remember I had three, but I think, yeah, me and you bought it. Me and me and Alpha bought them from, like, bulk bins. Why, why did I play Iron Wall? Oh, Cosmo. 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 Yeah. i never seen half the cards you play. Bro, yeah, 2016 was a different format, man. Um, I had system downs in the deck but um with pk now if you hit iron walls on pk they can't get their flog blades and they can't get their searches so this is just better because it hits two decks now instead of one yeah nice awesome so that's a quick side deck and for extra deck it's pretty generic uh one ignister which what bro what happened to my ulti first ignister by the way i don't know if i have I that in the middle of your collection though no? yeah this is why my collection maybe um, this is why the deck was so expensive. I'm pretty sure some of the extra deck stuff was like maxed out here. I think was the biggest hit. If they didn't hit this to one, the deck would be still the best deck in all in my opinion. Oh yeah, do you remember when people used to sh play three of this? Because like you can like cycle through it or some shit. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not a hard ones per turn. It's a once per turn per card. Yeah. So you would make what a crazy cool. card. Smart. Oh, and whole part. This early, was like a thirty dollar card. Out too late, yeah. work, right? uh, one this just because you can still make him. Um, surprisingly, I was gonna take him out, and then when I took him out, I uh, found that like I needed him. Like honestly, I needed him, so like I just put him back in. Uh, one F zero. Um, he was your out to dark destroyer originally. Now he's your second out. So he acts as a second ignister to, uh, to dark destroyer or Beatrice or something, and this just goes for game. Uh, one uh, dark rebellion. No one plays this card in this deck. But again, power just to go for game. Um, that comes really. I'm such a scrub at this time in my life, man. I really remember yeah. thinking Dark Rebellion was just so. so I remember. Cool. I remember this phase of you being like, "Yo, Dark Rebellion is like 
the thing you play in your action. I remember this. Actually. Chat, listen. At this time, there was no hand traps like we have today. So there's no imperm. There's none of that shit. Dark Rebellion, whenever it went off, like it always went off. Like no one ever stopped. No one did it. No, but it never not did. The, the only time it never went off is like if your opponent had strike, they would strike the summon really. But I don't think. Uh, that... I mean, this was still in the era of like. I think Phoenix Chain and Valor were still kind of floating around, right? Valor was. Valor was for sure because of the Monarch format. I don't think people play Phoenix Chain in this format because uh, this is the format when they got Fogblade. This is when PKs came out. Yeah. So Fogblade was definitely a Fog lot more. Blade. But I guess you could also argue Fogblade just outs Dark Rebellion. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of times where Dark Rebellion actually just won. Straight up won games at this time. Close to OTK. Uh, this is, I think... Oh, let me check if I was playing this. Actually, we'll see, I guess. This was before F... Not F Zero. This was before Utopia Lightning came out. Because when Utopia Lightning came out, it became a staple in every deck. So before that, Dark Rebellion. I think this was like, post. I think this was post Utopia Lightning. We just could never find one. No, I got one on release. I got a book. I got the manga. Uh, yeah, yeah. I got I got my Utopia so Lightning on release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think if this was after, then I might have it in my extra. So OTK, you have this just for game. Raft, cause Raft's good. I bump, uh... Look at this ulti first, man. You know what's funny? Actually, I still I think I still have this one. I don't have that. I, I changed this down to one because you don't need it anymore. To be honest, you don't need it anymore. Double Dweller, because the meta, obviously. Uh, one Cowboy for game. One Digusto. One... Emerald was like 25 bucks at this time, by the way. King of the Feral Broken. Limbs. And this is just to recycle this. And recycle these. Dynasters. Oh, I love this card. And um, for, just to round it off, you play one Norden and one beat up. Norden. Yo, look how beat up the Thousand Eyes is. I remember uh, this one. <laughs> I know the card's like bad condition. Like, check it out. It still guess, works. It still works. Yo, honestly, the card is the card. See how bad condition it is? So let me tell you guys a quick story. When when Beatrice was announced and BA was getting meta again, um, Thousand Eyes went from like a $1 card to a $50 card, okay? This is an Ultra, by the way. Um, PSV, I think, yeah. Ultra PSV, it's unlimited, it's not first, but even for the unlimited, it was like 50, maybe 40, maybe like 40 bucks, okay? So this was like 40 bucks at the time, and I was thinking, I'm like, I need to get my hands on one of these. By the way, the at this time, there was no common reprints, no rare reprints. There was only this and the Super DB1, okay? And I think the Super DB1 was like 30-ish. This one was like 40-ish, regardless, right? It was expensive. So I went to a Locals, and they had this beat-up one. And the guy was like, I was like, yo, I really need this card. How much How much do you want for it? He's like, I don't know. It's really beat up. So I was like, all right, so how much do you want for it? He's like, a dollar. I was like, I didn't even hesitate. I was like, sure, I'm buying it for a dollar. One of the best pickups I ever had because this card single-handedly won me like multiple games at this event. I remember this card because you would always just, whenever you drew Instant Fusion, you make this against Beatrice. And it was broken. You guys want to see something funny? To this day, I have that same exact thousand eyes. I hope it's, I hope it, this is my GOAT, like, deck, by the way. I play this in GOAT, but to this day, I have that exact same Thousand Eyes. That thing's been with you through thick and thin, bro. Literally. I love that. Like, I literally love yeah, this well, card. Yeah, have it. yeah, yeah, I know Cap still have it. I love this card. I never get rid of it. I remember at the time, people were asking me, actually, asking me to buy it for, like, 20 bucks or 30 bucks at the event, because they needed it, and it was so hard to come by at that time. So people were like, bro, I don't care if it's damaged. Um, I'll still pay you, like, 20 bucks for it or some shit like that. And in my head, I was like, I paid a dollar for this. I could easily make 20 bucks right now. But I was like, no, I need the card. And it worked out because I got I came 17th. So I got it, I picked it up for a quarter. So Oh, a quarter. Never mind, a quarter. I didn't pay a dollar for it. I picked it up for a quarter. I, I did not lose for that. So that's it for the extra, guys. Um, and then here I just say thank you, Sam, whatever, whatever, for having me on the channel. Yeah, so I regret two things in my life. I regret canceling YouTube and not being YouTube anymore because I think YouTube at the time when I stopped the channel i was at 7k subs and it was growing fast that channel was blowing up at the time by the way you didn't have any other like tubers there was no other like youtubers very few now it's just oversaturated but before there was no other tubers at this time it was like me sam you had cap you had m cole obviously you had lithium maybe mbt but i actually don't remember i never watched mbt at this time you didn't have pack you didn't have Farfai used to be Glasgow at this time. I remember Farfai used to be Glasgow. I don't know. That's it. There's no other tubers. And they also didn't do deck profiles. Me and Sam, I think we're like one of the, like two of the very few that actually did deck profiles at that time. Maybe, yeah, I, maybe hard. I, like, I don't remember. I don't remember everyone else who, who was doing it at this time, 2016. Like, obviously you have the OGs. Like, you have my M. Cole and you have all those guys. But who else was doing deck profiles at this time? Oh, I guess you had like Zephyr War Games. You had um, Kira Twig. You had Team APS, obviously. Yeah, at that time you had you had a few, but none of them really did deck profiles. You know, Team APS never did really did deck profiles at the time. And then obviously you had the guys like Cyber Knight and and Simply Unlucky, but those are pack opening channels, right? 
there wasn't a lot of deck profile challenges at this time. It, it was just me and Sam. So Sam was doing really good. Maybe at the time he was like at 10k. And I was like, and then I think I got to 7k. He was at like 30k at that time. But this was a good time for Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTube. If I, if I, man, this is why it's still one of my greatest regrets. Because if I never quit this channel, I think I can be considered one of the top yu gi at this time. By this time. This would have been like seven years of the channel at that point. If I, if I kept going. But thank you guys all for watching me today. Watching me, that sounds weird. Thank you guys all for being here today. Thank you guys all for watching me. I've never said that before. That's actually, I feel very narcissistic. Yo, Alpha called me narcissistic the other day, by the way. I don't think Is I'm he narcissistic. Not? I don't think I'm narcissistic. Anyways, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. Um, Bill was like, nah, I was just here to watch you. <laughs> now I feel like an asshole for saying that, bro. I didn't even mean to say that. <laughs> but I'll catch you guys the other day. Uh, tomorrow. I'll catch you guys the other day. Oh my god, I can't speak English anymore. Alpha, can you just say my outro? Alright guys, it's your boy, Narcissistic Spanko, signing out. Peace.